we're streaming on Facebook. We're live. So, hey, everybody, welcome. It's Johnny Mo, and we're going to be talking with our bi weekly, I guess it's bi weekly, every other week uh, conversation with the consigliere of Keeping Current Matters, Mr. David Childers. How are you doing, David? Johnny, I'm doing good. It's good to do these. It is every other week. You know, we were back uh, together, you know, two weeks ago on a Friday. And mm -hmm. I love these chats. I love everybody that joins and ask good questions. And we talk about what's, you know, what's happening in the market and using data, using facts to back up what, uh, you know, what we're saying. And Johnny, you and I were talking before this about so many people having conversations that are based in, in facts, you know, and based in, in reality. So they're, they're I'd be based. back and decide to do that. Yeah. And don't please people, if you're listening, please, 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 I beg of you, don't click on the headline. Don't just read the headline and then think that that's fact. The headlines are designed to click to, to sell to that's all it's designed for and so yeah. they'll put out these doom and gloom headlines and the truth is absolutely opposite of what they're saying and that's what we're going to talk about today we're going to break some myths in a couple different areas i got a good story once we get into it i'll share it um but where do we want to start man what's going on in your world yeah i think there's there's several things we can talk about i always like to bring a forbearance update so i've got that in uh, and what's uh, planned for today. We can talk about that. Uh, you know, last time we were together, we talked about prices and, and affordability, you know, prices rising, certainly happening all across the country. I'll bring a little bit more uh, context to that conversation. But I, I thought an area we might start out uh, was, you know, Fannie Mae's Home Purchase Sentiment Index, which came out um, here in the last week and had some interesting information in it. You know, not everything that I think sometimes we get on here, Johnny, and, and maybe, you know, we, we're talking about, uh, you know, optimistically what's going on in the market. And I always want to bring the truth, but I think we always want to be able to balance that truth and just say, hey, here's what's happening. Here's what consumers are saying. And this is a more, you know, sobering look, but I think it's something we want to, we want to talk about. This is a quote out of the out of the home purchase sentiment index says, however, the second consecutive month, consumers are reported a significantly more pessimistic view of home buying conditions. On net, that component fell to an all time survey low with only 35 percent of respondents believing it's a good time to buy a home down 53 uh, percent from March. Year over year, that home price, home purchase sentiment index is up 12.5 points. So, what does this mean? Uh, you know, folks uh, that that you know are out there looking for homes, maybe are getting tired of that. I'm going to talk about you know buyer fatigue here in just a minute. Um, but no doubt, with rising prices, people going, you, you know, do we still want to buy a home? Some frustration around that, and you know, anecdotally, it makes sense. Uh, as to what we're seeing, you know, in the real estate market, you know, if we look at this graphically, going back to June uh, of last year, we see it's about half uh, the number of people when surveyed saying, you know, it was a good time to buy a home right now. And we know all the reasons of that. And if you were to look at this graph, is it a good time to sell? They're almost going in inverse directions right now. You know, good time to sell is skyrocketing. Good time to buy is going down. So uh, let's talk about that. I want to bring one other quote and just a couple things to give you a perspective about that right now. Doug Duncan said this, however, despite the challenging buying conditions, consumers do appear more intent to purchase uh, on their next move, a preference that may be supported by the expectation of continued lower mortgage rates, uh, elevated savings rates during the pandemic, which we've talked about which it may allow many uh, to afford a down payment. So people are still out there looking, but the overall sentiment is, you know what? I I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting fatigued. I'm getting, you know, starting to wonder, is this the best time to buy a home? You know, I think just the reminder for us right now, when you look at data and facts, knowing that that, that is the reality, seven areas that our team put together, uh, you know, that are sources of buyer fatigue, record high medium price. You know, we talked about this last time we were together, 13% year over year in April, record low inventory. We know that record high sales over list price, record low days on market, record low rates. Half the houses listed in April went pending in one week or less. And 19% of homes sold in April had their appraised value come in below uh, the contract price. So I, I think, Johnny, you know, I, I more bring that up as, you know, certainly everything that's out there working with buyers today, setting the expectation of what's happening um, based on, on information uh, is what, what our job is today. 
Yeah, and you know, you brought up an excellent point and your point is brought from the consumer side, right? And that's the data that's collected. What I'm hearing over and over from agents and brokers about uh, fatigue that they're experiencing too, sure. right? Because they're putting, I mean, these poor people are showing homes, bang, bang. You mean, you got to jump up and go show a home right now because it won't be there tomorrow. Right. They're putting in five, you know, there's five, 10, 15, 20 offers. I'm hearing the stories over and over. So they're getting burnt out. The agents are getting burnt out. The frontline people, the consumers getting burnt out. And boy, that friction between the two uh, is a place that I'm glad I'm not experiencing right now. Um, But is there any, is there any relief in the horizon? Do you think? Well, I think there, I think there is relief. You know, we talked about that survey that came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, it's probably been a month ago now, where economists have been projecting you know, we're going to go into the second half of the year, see a rise in inventory. Most places across the country, we're seeing more inventory come back, just not the amount that we need. We need more, uh, more than what we have. And so I think as we go on, most experts are saying, hey, inventory is going to come back, but it's not going to come back to the degree that it's going to alleviate those challenges. So, so I think the, your point is a very well-made point. Stress, uh, you, you know, with, with every agent just about across the country, stress in the buyer situation, how do you walk into that? How do you, how do you set expectations? How do you yourself uh, manage that, you know, as you go through uh, your, your day uh, and everything going, uh, you know, on? Yeah. And I know a lot of people out there in the circles that I'm from, I told you I had a story. I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you a story. Um, a lot of, a lot, some circles that I'm in, you know, they, they think that uh, they're hedging their bets and they're telling people get prepared for uh, the short sales that are going to be coming and get prepared for the foreclosures that are coming because yeah. the, because of the forbearance is coming due and the moratoriums are coming due. But yep. we talk about forbearance almost every single time. And the numbers that you share don't support that. Yep. Right. So I don't think that that's going to be the, the the log that we can remove from the log jam to make it all to make it all go. What's the forbearance world looking like right now? Yeah, let's let's talk about that for a minute. I think this has been, you know, going back a year ago, it's been one of the big fears we've had in our business. You know, what's going to happen with everybody that's that's been in forbearance? I've tried to, you know, once a month or so, Johnny, as we're together, bring an update so you have that. Uh, you know, I would encourage you to, to, to kind of look, look at these numbers. This is the latest data uh, that's come out from Black Knight and others that we collect at Keeping Current Matters. And I'll start kind of here. Uh, you know, this slide, if you followed us, you've probably seen it before. Originally, you know, the conversation was 30% of mortgages are going to go into forbearance. You see that on the red bar there. You know, and, and really the conversation at that time was every one of them is going to turn into a foreclosure as well. You know, people that can't make their payments, if they can't make their payment, how are they going to make up six months or 12 months of back payments? Uh, and the actual top in May of 2020 was almost eight and a half percent in forbearance. We sit right now at just over four percent. The next big milestone will be dropping into the threes as more and more people come off of forbearance. So, you know, the story there, Johnny, nowhere near like what uh, what it was projected originally to be. Um, and people are coming off right now. You know, we follow the story uh, of what happens when they come off. This is the latest data as of May 30th um, of those that have come out of forbearance. 46.1%, uh, almost half were paid in full. They didn't need it. They used it almost as an insurance policy, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, 37.4% worked out some sort of plan with their bank. You see it there in the, in the blue section mm-hmm. of the pie. So the overwhelming majority either came out and paid it or they worked out you know, something with their bank. Still 16.5% are still in trouble. Uh, the story of this over time is, you know, the, the, the green portion of the, if you were looking at a line, uh, the green portion is starting to decrease just a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's about 50% when we started tracking this uh, in January. And the blue portion of workouts is rising slightly and the red is relatively stayed uh, level as people have gone through this. So I, I think, you know, what is happening here is uh, very different from what we thought a year ago and what even, you know, experts have thought, uh, you know, going into it. Now, we started talking Keeping Current Matters the end of last year. We don't see a wave of foreclosures for a number of different reasons. And, you know, where we stand today with strong appreciation, I just don't see where somebody would get foreclosed on, especially with, you know, even pre-pandemic, we know that, um, you know, 
90% of the homes had enough equity, uh, those in forbearance, to um, you know, make a sale and pay a real estate commission and, and move on. The only reason somebody would go into forbearance is you know, they didn't know they had that option. I mean, go into foreclosure would be they didn't know they had that option. And so I think it's turning out very, very differently than what, uh, what we, you know, uh, maybe thought on the front end. And, and again, Johnny, going back to what you were talking about with short sales and things like that, if you're waiting around or you're coaching somebody to wait around for a foreclosure or short sale, you may be disappointed because the numbers just don't show them coming to market like uh, you may imagine. You know, I have this graphic here, right? Number of consumers with new foreclosures, three-year average there you can see in the middle, just over 290,000. Last year in 2020, we were significantly below that uh, by about 161,000. If you see that, that light pink area, that bar. Mm -hmm. And this year, you know, we're forecasted to be significantly below that for not a lot of reasons. The, the moratorium on foreclosures that's been, uh, you know, uh, pushed out. And also the number of people that now have the ability to sell their home due, due to rising price appreciation that wouldn't have to go into a foreclosure. And so I think, Johnny, I think the reality is right now where we stand, we could literally see less foreclosures uh, in this country this year when we were expected, you know, where people are talking about seeing more, mm -hmm. uh, which is very different than what, you know, what a lot of agents are, you know, are talking about right now relative to, uh, you know, the, the you know, distressed sales that could come to market. So the, the short story there is, uh, you know, folks are coming off uh, and not not a, uh, a, you know, just this massive wave of foreclosures coming because of the equity people have in their homes. Yeah, not only, you know, the equity, which is great, and it's just something that supports how strong it is out there. So almost 50% of the people, 46% is, they're out, right? They're, yeah. They're out of the forbearance. So that's you know, roughly 50%. We're seeing people come in. Um, I hear these reports from coast to coast that people are offering 100,000 over 200,000 and they're paying cash that over it. Right. They're, you know, and so there, there seems to be a lot of cash out there. And I just want to caution people to not project your current situation on what the whole entire state of the economy might be, right? You yourself might be in a situation like that. That doesn't mean everybody else is. You might see it from a particular point, but the data, and that's the important part is that, and that's why I love, love what you guys do. It's data, it's analytical. You're, you're given fact, right? Uh, you're given all these benchmarks and everything and the data never lies. I mean, yeah. it can be manipulated however you want it to be, but you guys don't do that for any, you're, you're unbiased, right? There's no, there's no agenda here. It's just pure data, uh, economic data to, to, to analyze. And what I see is the same thing, right? And, you know, I know a lot of people, and I don't want this to go political or anything like that, thought that, you know, this current president, oh, the market was going to crash and everything was going to tumble yeah. and everything else like that. Still seems to be a, a record housing year, Seems still seems to be a good economy, still seems to be plenty with plenty of people with bunches of money to be able to buy these houses, even cash in some instances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the, you know, the, the velocity of the market, you talk about, you know, there's been a lot of talk of, you know, appreciation and affordability. We talked about it last time. We'll talk yeah. about it here in just a minute, but I, I think that the, the, as we go throughout the year, the projections on appreciation, the projections on transactions continue to go up. The biggest challenge right now relative to real estate in this country is we can't sell what we don't have. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. Uh, and, and reaching market potential uh, will be the, you know, the, the, the big issue this year. You know, we'll sell a lot of homes, more homes than we sold last year, um, but not as many as we could. Uh, mm -hmm. If we had more more inventory, more available homes for people, you know, in the market. I was somewhere. I must have been maybe on a coaching call that I was listening in on a group, big group coaching call, and they were talking about innovation, right? One of the mm -hmm. things that's driving or starving uh, the inventory out there is new construction, and there is innovative products. And this goes back to a company I think they called Galax Galaxa or something like mm -hmm. that. They're down in Naples. Uh, I had to, I would, had a meeting with them with a builder down there and they have innovative new products and, and that they build, they build the panels and everything else like that. They're all hurricane rated F5 over. It's like an amazing um, product. 
but you're, I think we're going to start to see because through adversity creates opportunity. Right. I think right. we're going to start to see some level of innovation or an innovative product that's brought to market and hopefully can ease this particular situation because well, oh, go ahead. It's, US, it's the U S economy, right? That's, that's what it's built upon is, is innovation. Yeah. So we're going to talk about affordability, uh, I'm sure, at some point today. And when I see this meme going around and it shows this big thing of lumber that was 2020, you could get this lumber. And in 2021, you can get this lumber. Right. right yeah, yeah, like eight two by fours. Yeah. So in that respect, lumber itself has become unaffordable in one respect or new construction has had their increase. But the rates and what people are getting paid makes it makes it affordable you know they can afford the higher price because the rates are lower the money's almost free to get right yeah i think a couple of things that have just come out in the, in the last week that we're seeing and, I, and i'll try to get more information on this when we talk in a couple of weeks i'll bring it back but we're seeing lumber come off the highs now what we want to see is is that going to stick around is that short term i do think you're seeing a shift in the administration in washington them realizing this is an issue and we need to pay attention to it. Now, we'll see what that brings. But um, I do believe and most economists are saying, you know, the, the lumber issue will be a short term issue that was worked through. The question is just timing on that. The other thing, John Burns Consulting, that is a consulting firm that does a lot of builder work, um, just released that in the first quarter, I believe it was 23% publicly traded builders increase their lot inventory. So they are, they're going out, they're buying land, they're going to build, you know, so we've seen some headwinds in construction of higher cost, and that means higher cost to the consumer, the builder's not going to eat that, we all know that. Um, and, and so I think we can see that innovation there. I think we will continue to see people sell, people moving out of houses, uh, you, you know, that are aging and whatever reason uh, that they make uh, that decision. But there's no doubt that we need more uh, homes in this country. And that's where it gets into the conversation around affordable housing. And, mm -hmm. you know, what are we doing for folks to be able to buy a home? And I don't think there's anybody on the call that doesn't want more people to buy a home, right? That's why mm -hmm. uh, we believe in home ownership uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and want, want to see everybody achieve the American dream of, that, of home ownership. And so I think there's a, still a lot to come there, but, but some good news starting to peek through relative to the cost side of it. And, and I, I do want to talk about that relative to payments and things like that, because as prices rise, you know, conventional wisdom starts to go, gosh, how, how, how long can we sustain this? What's going to happen? What, you know, is there going to be a crash? You know, all, all of that with pricing. Give you a little perspective uh, on that relative to prices. This is a study that came out from Black Knight, national payment to income ratio. Just to give you perspective on the left there, the average over the last uh, 25 years, when you take the average uh, wage and in, in, uh, average payment, against the average price of a home is 23.6% over time. Last five years, it's been just over 20%. Today, it's 20.5%. Okay, mm -hmm. just to put that into perspective. So we still are in an, a, a time where homes and, and the amount of money committed to a mortgage payment is less than what it is uh, or has been historically. Uh, Black Knight went on in this study to say, should home price appreciate continue at its current rate, which is, is escalating quickly, and 30-year rates slowly rise to 3.5% by the end of 2022, the national payment to income ratio would hit 21.6 by the end of this year. So I'm not here to forecast interest rates, where they're going up, how they're going up, and all that, but even as they go up, we'll be in a good uh, you know, uh, you know, long-term perspective uh, of the amount of money committed to a mortgage payment uh, as has measured historically. You know, one area that uh, came out too from the Atlantic, uh, from Bill McBride, uh, the only places where McBride told me he could envision a bubble bursting are locations where urban residents bought second homes in a panic only to have the urban core quickly get vac vaccinated and normalized in 2021. We might see some price declines in the second home areas like small towns in New England and other beach towns on the East Coast. But even there, we might just see a shift where people uh, decide they like owning second homes. So one bit of information, I always want to bring that, you know, that, uh, that brings up that idea of a bubble. Many people asking, are we in a bubble? 
I can tell you overwhelmingly experts are saying they don't see the signs of a bubble. Bill McBride here says, hey, maybe in some of these towns where people ran out to go buy a second home and they didn't think life was ever going to get back to normal, they go, I don't know if I want to do this or continue to do it. Maybe some things there, maybe not. We don't know, but, uh, but interesting take. Yeah, I don't think Raleigh Durham's in a bubble. They got Apple, they got Amazon, they got all these other people coming. Right. And that's another good point. What do you see happening in your local market? Right. You know, you see more inventory coming. There, there are markets clearly where builders are building and there are markets where they aren't. Do you see business moving into town? Do you see business leaving? What's, you know, what's happening in your, in your area? Hundred um, percent. And somebody had posted in here, Sue said, which is kind of off topic a little bit, but I do. I'll just mention it real quick because I'm seeing that we talked about new construction. Uh, she say she says she's seeing less offered on the buyer side. Um, that could be for many different reasons, and we don't want to talk about commissions too deeply. Um, for many reasons, but what I would say is prepare yourself for that. You're gonna to have to prepare yourself to have that conversation. I mean, there is a DOJ lawsuit or an antitrust lawsuit against uh, commissions and everything else like that. So prepare yourself for that. But we are seeing builders take away the commission. Uh, so you also, again, have to have that conversation uh, with your people that they might end up having to pay your commission. It's an uncomfortable conversation to have, but it's real, it's it's what's happening right now. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to go, I want to interject one thing, not on the commission side, but mm -hmm. in the Q&A here, if, if you're watching and, and so grateful for those that join uh, these calls every other Friday, if there are topics that you want Johnny and I to cover, put those in there. Um, and I'll do our best to uh, to get our research team to to do some work around that, but uh, always want to bring what, uh, what people want to hear. Yeah, and same, right? You, you feed the people what the people want, give them the bread. <laughs> give them their bread. So, I mean, as far as I see, and as far as you're talking about, things seem stable and it's not turning around. We're not hitting a pinnacle and go, you know, coming down the other side, any of that may see some slowdown. Hopefully we'll see some uh, relief from whatever the bureaucrats yeah. down in DC come up with. We need lumber, right? Yeah. Take tariffs off, get that lumber in here, um, yeah. you know, get the mills going. And I think that that is also going to help. But, you know, truthfully, I mean, you're up in the, the Virginia, D.C. metro area, right? Right. Um, there ain't a whole lot of place to go build. Um, right. So that, that brings up a whole nother problem. If I was uh, if I was a real estate agent right now, I'd be looking an hour away from where the metropolis is can i get land out there right um you still come up to the lumber when the lumber turns it, it's an investment i've been invested in deals that have taken seven years to come to fruition right. so think a little bit differently think long term not just right now right now there is no necessary relief you're going to have to work through that 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 fatigue, come up with other answers. It's not as so simple as uh, they make it on TV where you're going to run out there, open a few doors, and whoo, I got paid. Right, right. Um, you're going to have to work right now. You're going to have to work. I think that is. I think the agents that are out there making that happen, um, uh, you know, are the ones that are winning in, uh, in the market today. And, you know, more than anything, uh, experts are saying this. One, that we are in a situation right now where there's a frenzy going on. Homes are appreciated very quickly. I don't think everybody says they expect that to continue. That's clearly not the case, but they also don't expect, you know, to, to, to come to a point where we see depreciation. What do we know is happening in this market? People are trying to catch the market, um, you, you know, um, and, and so that'll happen. You know, somebody overprices a home and they've got a price reduction. That's not depreciation. That's somebody that was overpriced to begin with. If a home's not selling today, it's not priced anywhere near right. We, we know that, right? Um, or there's some other issue in there. But, you know, I, I think as we look into next year, still, you know, inventory challenges is just the, the degree to which we have that challenge. You know, we've had inventory challenges for, for the last several years, not as bad as, as what we've seen recently. And we'll get through it. You know, some people overpay because, you know, and some people, quite frankly, will overpay and not have any remorse. They'll pay. I, I can't even say overpaying. This is what the market is saying it's worth. But if you're relocating, you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. If you're relocating with your family, you don't have a choice. So I, I still see, you know, the, the strong moves that are happening out there. I think we're going to be in this ride for a little bit longer. So, so buckle yeah. up, you know, tie your shoes and uh, be lean.
Yeah. So I see a question on here. Tevis said, what do you think may happen if there's a second lockdown? I have an answer for that, Johnny, but you want to go first or what's your perspective on that? It, it starts with Rev and ends in Aleutian. So, I mean, that's my answer. I, I, I ain't down for that. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 well, I think that Johnny, you know, most folks would say, you know, let's not do that again. If we can, we can handle, you know, avoid it. <laughs> Uh, Davis, I would say this, we sold more homes uh, in 2020 than we did in 2019 in the middle of the pandemic, in the middle of the lockdown. Uh, we've proven we can do that. We've proven our business uh, can be resilient. I, I think agents last year did whatever they could do to make a transaction happen. We saw things that had never happened in our business, you know, getting things done through the courthouse, uh, you know, electronically where they, they couldn't be done that way in the past. So I, I, I sure hope it doesn't happen. I, I think most of us feel that way. Uh, if it did, I would say, look at last year and what happened. We, we had a great year in real estate. I personally had an amazing year during the lockdown. And I know, I know people that had a very difficult time yeah. um, because they're social butterflies, right? They yeah, need yeah. Out or, you know what I mean? Now all of a sudden you get everybody all cooped up in the one chicken coop, man, if it happens, it happens. Just do the best that you can. I learned so much. I learned editing. I learned so much more about digital marketing, so much more about programming funnels and everything. I mean, I already had a background in this stuff, but yeah. I, it's like I perfected it. Right. So innovate. Right. Uh, if, if there's another lockdown or whatever, people are still going to have to move. Uh, Apple still going to move. Amazon still going to move. Right. All these places are still going to move. So it, it's really going to be um, with, with your region. Right. What happens in your region? Every region is going to be a little bit different. But God, I hope we don't get there because I don't know if the people can handle it. Yeah, no, I hear you. Beverly, you uh, mentioned, is there an email address for where you could possibly request uh, slides from a previous webinar? You can send me an email directly. It's david at keepingcurrentmatters.com. I'd uh, be happy to get you any slides that you need, uh, david at keepingcurrentmatters.com. Yeah, and that's about our time, David. And let's tell everybody, again, remind them, get your 14-day free trial of Keeping yeah. Current Matters. Go through the blogs, go through the articles, connect it to your website. Be the person that has the information, not just a yes, yes, yes agent. Oh, I know, I know. Defer to, to keep in current matters, and then you take the blame right off of yourself and say, well, d d look at the data, right? Yeah. Whatever you think, Mr. or Mrs. Home Buyer, Home Seller, this is the data, right? Yeah. Uh, but get your 14 day free trial at keepingcurrentmatters.com. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. You can go there and it's $29 a month and, uh, and have all this information at your fingertips. As always, I appreciate you, my consigliere. I had trouble saying that word for years. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, Johnny. Thank you for, uh, for today and uh, great to be on. Awesome. Everybody be safe, be well, peace out. Bye.